cloud computing doesn't mean that organizations have stopped buying infrastructure, but they are getting a little more choosy about what they're buying and why. With me here is Anton Granick of Nutanix, and he's going to tell me how his company has a, a different approach to data center computing. Anton. Yeah, thank you. So I think for Nutanix, um, really it boils down to the, the principles behind the company and what our philosophy is. And in a nutshell, what we're trying to do is bring the, the goodness of web scale, which was pioneered by the likes of Google and Amazon and Facebook, to the enterprise, leveraging things such as uh, commodity-based commodity -based hardware, um, solutions that are software driven, that are designed to fail, that can scale parallelly. Uh, and at the end of the day, drastically simplify the infrastructure, both from an operational and administrative perspective moving forward. Uh, if you look at the principles of WebScale and how they use that commodity uh, x86 hardware to be able to um, create their foundation of the infrastructure, it basically allows them to build as they grow, which is in contrast to 95% of the data centers that are out there today using a traditional three-tiered architecture that you would find with a server, SAN, and networking setup. So you've got a, a two-year, two-U appliance. How does it differ from other people's hardware? Yeah, so the first thing for us is it is uh, commodity x86 enterprise-grade hardware. Um, it has direct attached storage, and in essence what we're doing is completely eliminating the need for a SAN. Uh, many organizations today are struggling with the cost and complexity that comes with uh, an infrastructure that continues to grow. Um, so for us, taking the compute and the storage and collapsing it into a purpose-built 2U appliance has drastically simplified what organizations are able to do today. And you can scale out? How far, how, how, uh, how sizable? What can you do with this? Yeah, so theoretically, I mean, it's, it's to infinity. We have uh, existing customers today across all verticals, whether it be government, healthcare, financial, education, uh, retail and manufacturing where some of our smallest customers are starting off with three nodes and some of our largest customers have already deployed thousands of nodes. And what we've been able to do for them is to grow that infrastructure in parallel or on a fractional consumption basis, which is one of the underlying themes of cloud computing, allowing people to purchase or utilize the infrastructure that they need without having to completely fill up a data center and have infrastructure sitting idle. How many customers do you have in Canada? So with uh, the last, I would say, three months as we just come to our fiscal year end, or sorry, uh, quarter, first quarter um, coming to a close, we are now actually surpassing the 100 customer mark in Canada. And that is uh, just over 18 months of being in Canada. So it's been a very quick adoption rate and once again across all the major verticals. Um, when you talk to, to a potential customer, what's the most convincing selling point that, that you have that, that, that will, will close the sale? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's, here's your typical sales answer. It depends. It depends on what the pain point is that that specific, or specific customer is trying to address. Um, in some cases, they just don't have the resources to be able to manage the existing environment or the growing environment. So by simplifying that infrastructure and reducing it, we've solved that pain point. In other organizations, they've tried to roll out things such as VDI. And traditional architecture just was not designed to support that type of workload. There's uh, numerous instances where they've run into challenges around performance, um, scale, management, cost. So in the case of VDI or any virtual workload, we've been able to allow them to leverage our virtual computing platform to maximize the benefits of virtualization. If you look at the problem that virtualization solved, on one end, it created a massive consolidation ratio on the server side, which was great, and people reduced their costs because they didn't have 50 applications running on 50 physical servers. They started to bring those ratios down from 50 to 1 to 100 in some cases. And that's great, but on the back end, they had to support it with a massive infrastructure that was driven by the storage area network, and that was very costly. So the economics of virtualization in many instances didn't work out as they had originally hoped. By eliminating the SAN, what we've done is really collapsed that entire data center into a 2U, what we call data center in a box, which allows our customers to build as they grow. So instead of over-provisioning up front and assuming they're going to grow into that infrastructure, we allow them to buy what they need today and then plan and build out and, and procure as they grow. Okay, thanks very much for this. For IT World Canada, I'm Howard Solomon. <music>